Bernie Bickerstaff uh, from Benham, Kentucky, and I live in Washington, D.C. now. Well, I, I remember the, the community nurturing. I remember fairness. I remember, remember the competitiveness. I remember the rivalries that blossomed into, you know, indelible friendships and uh, mutual respect. They, they went out and hired workers based on their athletic ability. Willie Watts told us that the way he got to, to Lynch was that his father was hired because he was a good hitter and could play infield very well. And in, in reviewing old company records, personnel records, we, would, we found some that were termination notices in a, in a file, could not hit was not a good fielder. So these people were let go because they were hired not to work in the mines, but for their athletic ability. The leagues, the recreation leagues, were segregated by race, but these folks scrimmaged against each other with, to make each other better because the pride of the whole town was riding on the success of either a black or a white team or both teams. The, the, the sports life here in Lynch, uh, look around on these walls, you see all kinds of photos of, uh, of high school sports. Took a lot of pride as being a pirate. Growing up, you envied and admired the older guys who were already playing sports and, and look forward to the day that you could don the blue and gold. <laughs> One thing about U.S. Steel, if you were a good student and a good athlete, they looked out for you. <laughs> the kids in Eastern Kentucky, the reason they got to be so good, nobody was going to pick you on their team if you couldn't play, if you wasn't good. Everybody tried to be the best they could. People from Jenkins and Hazard and Millsburg, you know, all these other cities that we used to compete against, and now we all buddy buddies and we talk about old times. And that area where we grew up, they knew how to raise their young, and you weren't only disciplined at home, but you were disciplined, uh, you know, in, in the community if you got out of line. And I've always felt before the book came out on how to raise a child, you know, it was done in the Tri-Cities area. Everybody knew everybody and still know everybody. Uh, even coming back home with your kids, People don't know the kids, they can see them, oh, that's a Smith, or that's a Clark, or that's a Ward, or that's a, you know, that's a Snow, you know. Everybody know who you are, even if they don't know you personally. I live now in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, by way of Lynch, Kentucky. When I was a kid, oh, I can remember many things. Best place in the world to have been raised as a kid. The connection we had with each other, Family looking after family. Children had free hand to play without fear. Lynch itself was basically on a, a, a separate but equal uh, type of a situation. And uh, we all lived in different camps, like from Camp 1 to Camp 7. We all had our own little area. We had like, for example, for recreation in Camp 2, what they call a boarding house where most people attended that for parties, uh, et cetera. Uh, a lot of men stayed at the boarding house. Then the number one spot that I usually identify home away from home was the pool room. And there you had top floor for like the Masonic fraternity having meetings. Then we had the pool tables downstairs, which were all people in Lynch mostly came to the pool room. So that was the hot spot for a lot of things. Growing up in Benham, it was a segregated community. And we black folk lived in the eastern part of Benham. Everything that was dirty was in the black community. The coal mines uh, on the mountain sides, on the north mountain side, as well as the south mountain side were in Benham. The coal dump, where they pile coal up 
and sometimes three and four, five stories high, was in the black community where the coal cars were repaired and made all of the noise and the dust and the dirt was in the black community. The bathhouses, there were two bathhouses, one for whites and one for the blacks. My father worked in the coal mine with the white coal miners. And when he came from the coal mines, he went to the left to go home and they would go to the right to go home. And that's how that system, that environment was set up. The clean facilities in Benham were all were in the white community, such as the, uh, uh, the company store. The International Harvester Company owned the big store, the department store in Benham, and they owned the meat market in Benham. Tennessee Ernie Ford sang the soul uh, song, I owe my soul to the company store. My daddy did. And they were taking money from his paycheck every week, but they still would not allow him at times to charge things on that, uh, on that company charge account. And when I was approximately four years old, I remember being in the meat market with my mother. And every time that a white person would come into the store, my mother was pushed back from being served. She told me that she had to wait her turn. And her turn did not come until after all of the white people in the store had been waiting on. There was a theater. The Isaac family owned the theaters in Cumberland, Benham, and Lynch. Now we could not go to, blacks could not go to the Isaacs Theater in Cumberland, Kentucky. We could go to the theater in Benham, Kentucky, and we could go to the theater in Lynch, Kentucky. All of Harlan County, I had something to do in it, um, job related. Uh, being in Everett's Black Mountain, uh, Putney Home, Wallace Creek, uh, Smith, which is some of the uglier places, Smith, Wallens Creek, and places like that, they would always try me first. And I would always just be there standing toe to toe. Jerome Ratchford, uh, and of course I'm from Southeastern Kentucky, specifically Lynch, Kentucky, Harlan County. My wife and I, we've been living in Atlanta, Georgia, almost 40 years now. My father was from Talladega, Alabama. And my mother, which is somewhat of an exception, was from Louisiana. Even when I talk about segregation, and we did live in a segregated uh, community, it wasn't, I can, and I can say this, because I, uh, professionally, I moved south, and I got a chance to see some of the rudiments of strict segregation. I wouldn't classify Lynch as having strict se segregation. For example, I don't remember seeing a separate water fountain for blacks and whites in Lynch. The first time I saw that, was if I went to the county seat or something of that sort. But in terms of looking white people in the face and, and being a fearful of, of consequences, it's very tragic consequences. If you didn't honor certain kinds of codes, we didn't grow up with that kind of rigidity and so forth. White communities and black communities floated together pretty easily on certain lines of demarcation and so forth. But there were some signs, a lot of signs of segregation as well. You know, from an employment perspective, while they all went into those mines and went to the same depth, there was disparities in terms of hiring and who could become a supervisor, et cetera, and what have you. <laughs>